Farming for me is more than a job. It's become a way of life. This way of life I've chosen requires certain components. Without those components, the viability of our vision for our farm is jeopardized. So how does a Marine become a small-scale sustainable farmer? After completing my obligated service to the Marine Corps, I met my future wife and soon after got married. My wife taught me about eating well, and the best way I could provide our family with wholesome food was by growing a garden and raising some livestock. In the process of providing for my family, I fell in love with cultivating the land, so much that I decided to pursue a new agrarian life with my family. You know, I joke with people and I, they said, how does a Marine become a farmer? I said, well, it's, it's obvious, being a farmer is just like being a Marine. You're outside all the time, you work hard, it's long hours, you're always fighting something. But in spite of all those obstacles, I have a mission. To provide myself, my family, and my community with food that is good for us and the environment where it is grown. Like any mission success, certain resources can dictate whether or not the mission is accomplished. We now have had the opportunity to grow produce and raise pasture-based livestock on a piece of property in Boone, North Carolina, a little gem located along the Blue Ridge in the southern Appalachian Mountains. Being a first-generation farmer poses several challenges. Not only land acquisition, but acquiring the means to cultivate the land. Fortunately for us, up until now, we have often had someone allow us to use their tractor. But all too often, we miss windows of opportunity to get tractor work done because we are subject to other people's schedules. The weather's not going to wait on you. When you get a window of opportunity to plow and plant, you, you have to get that done. And if I don't have the tools I need readily accessible, I can miss a window of time to get the ground worked. And if I miss that window, that could mean I don't get something planted or I don't get something harvested. And that that puts my livelihood at risk. There's no guarantee once we make the move to our own property that there'll be someone there to allow us to use their tractor. So if we finally get there and we don't have a tractor at our disposal, I mean, we're back at square one. Our model of farming, though traditional, is revolutionizing the way people eat. We have already invested all of our savings to start our journey in building a sustainable family farm. The acquisition of a tractor would be one more huge step in the right direction for our business. An appropriate sized tractor will ensure that when work needs to be done, that work will get done in a timely manner. We're working to rebuild rural economies that have been damaged by you know, industrialization. As our country has moved from the agrarian to the to an industrial society, uh, rural economies like ours have been hurt. And what we're trying to do now is you know, revive this agrarian lifestyle. You know, though it's traditional, it's changing the way people eat. It's changing the way com people interact and do commerce. New Life is important to me because they're really pioneers in our community of the type of farming that we value the most. Food is raised in a way that we want to raise our own food, so we believe in that, and it's delicious. When I buy from Quarry and we're invested in that, then um, that's just a part of having um, a strong local economy, which means that I get great neighbors. You know, my mission now is to provide good food for my family and my community, and I'm going to accomplish that mission. But this mission doesn't have an end. It's ongoing. People have always needed to eat. People always need to continue to eat. And I'm just hoping that I can pass on knowledge and skills that I'm learning now to my children, to the next generation. Hopefully I can provide them with the means to continue to grow good food.